What's up guys? We got some more champion rebalances coming up. I was kind of talking about this earlier, maybe like a week ago. Maybe a couple weeks ago. Anyway, that Plarium community managers were promising to us that we're gonna have champion rebalances on every single major update this year. And it was something that they didn't really do a lot last year and they kind of acknowledged that and promised to be a bit different. Now, what we have today is not going to be earth shattering major uh, reworks, no, not in my opinion at least, but the fact that we have these new updates coming every now and then very constantly, like I guess we're going to get champion rebalances every month, maybe even a couple times a month the way that we're going. And of course I think that's a good thing, I'm always asking for champion rebalances, so I'm super excited about that. But let's actually... Okay, we're just gonna look at the Kleina first, so you don't have to see the smash horn. But we will talk about both of the champions. I'm gonna say off the bat, neither one of these seem super interesting to me. Granted, I don't have Clyde now, but I still like that we're at least getting something. But let's actually see what Barium is telling us and how, how do we feel about that. After the following changes, you will find Kleina a more versatile and reliable champion. Perfect not only against Sand Devil, she will also be a great addition to your Hydra or Arena teams. <laughs> yeah, I, I don't know about that. Like. Hydra was already pretty a lot, but when you're saying that she's gonna be good in arena, you're just trolling. Anyway, moving on. When booked, her A1 will now grant a 100% chance to land asleep, so from now on you can fully rely on her taking care of the sleep debuff versus the Sand Devil. I'm not gonna say that name. <laughs> Maybe I will. Al Naime. You, you, you can you can correct me how you think you're gonna say that, but I don't think anybody anybody knows how you're supposed to say Al Naime. Anyway, her A2 got a new ability, restoring 100% of each ally's destroyed max HP. Now this sounds super super relevant to PvP. I can't can't wait to fix the destroyed max HP, which will come in handy not only in Sand Devil's Necropolis but also against Hydra, and especially especially Classic Arena. With Kleidna, <laughs> that's not what they said. With Kleidna on the team, you can utilize a powerful combo of decrease speed plus lead step off on enemies, restoring the, the allies destroyed max HP, and then healing, at, healing them at the same time. Before placing block, debuff, buff, and revive on death, with her A3, she will also remove all debuffs from her allies, so if you haven't got your perfect cleanser yet, look no further than Kleidna, got you covered. I think Shamael is kind of still the king of cleansers on Hydra because the gear debuff is so pesky, but... And finally her passive will have a chance to completely block all incoming damage on a random ally, including Kleidner herself. That is kind of cute. Honestly, she's one of those champions that she was released some time ago and nobody even remembers this champion because she's just that irrelevant. She's not even something that um, I almost forgot that this champion exists. Couple times when I have done some other stuff and I have looked at Sylvan Watchers, I noticed that oh yeah that that champion is a thing, but nobody cares about her and maybe a little bit more after this, but <laughs> definitely not for Arena. Touch of Slumber. Attacks one enemy has 80% chance of placing Sleep Depth for one turn and then feels the turn meter, so it's up from 70%. I'm assuming that's like 80% with booking 20%, so it's up from 70% to 100% placing a sleep debuff. That's nice, but if she is a support with 
no revive or some other kind of insane utility. That's not gonna be relevant for PvP, but of course it's great for Sand Devil, so I guess she can have a purpose, especially when she can heal the destroyed HP. Then on the A2, Lost in the Woods, has 75% chance of placing 30% decrease speed, debuff and leads on all enemies for two turns. And then the changed part is that restores 100% of each allies destroyed max HP, then heals all allies by 20% of these champions max HP. Now, the fact that your health is getting destroyed on Sand Devil is an issue, so I'm sure this champion is definitely gonna be better for that at this point. But the people, the people that have Thorns of Void champions to like um, actually try hard the PVE content, they're probably gonna one shot the boss anyway with multiple knots and so on. So I don't think those mega accounts are actually gonna use this on Sand Devil, but maybe those new players if they happen to get unlucky and pull Kleidner, but anyway. Then on the A3, Otherworld Infusion, removes all debuffs from all allies, then places block buffs, uh, then places block debuffs buff and revive on death buff for two turns. So she didn't used to have claims and they did add it. Like you can see on the notes that the highlighted part is the part that was changed and I guess they didn't just change things like on the A1 increasing the chance to proc sleep but they actually added new effects that weren't on the kit at all like this cleanse and the part where she ah uh, wait yeah the part where she heals destroyed HP neither one of the these two existed so that's actually a pretty major rework and buff but she was already totally irrelevant and at best she's gonna be good or decent on sand devil for people that are struggling with it but the end game accounts are not gonna use her they are just gonna kill the boss in five seconds and not gonna use this champion then on the passive a monarch has 30 percent chance of completely blocking the incoming damage on the first hit of an attack on a random ally occurs once per turn so i'm not really quite sure what the difference is it used to be the same except with the random ally i'm not even sure did it, did it only work against her based on the tooltip it kind of seems like it could work against anybody but i guess it only worked against her like the actually unlike the what is even the champion the one that I used to use on clan boss back, back in the day. It kind of sounds similar to, um, yeah, oh yeah, Sepulcher Sentinel passive, so it's something like that, but you're not gonna really, you can't build your PvE or boss teams around a random rock, so that's just a bonus that is not very relevant on practice, but then we're gonna get to the second champion, Akon Smash Lord, and I can actually say that I'm somebody that has used him. I I don't think there's too many people that have ever used this champion. It's one of the... Wait, where is it? Am I on the... No, it's not the wrong faction. Where is it? Oh yeah, I'm just being blind and I can't notice it, but... Akon is one of those champions that existed early on in the game. And the, and the bar for a champion to be useful was much lower than nowadays. But even back in those days, Hakon was always completely irrelevant and totally never used. Now, I used to use him in a shield set for Black Team Arena. And actually, early on when I started pushing for Platinum Arena, I did try to use him a little bit in offense for the cleanse because there used to be a lot of Dormines and Hegemons and so on but even for that he was just not good enough he doesn't really do that much if we quickly take a look at his kit he's like an HP scaling champion but 
he doesn't really scale well at all, so there's no actual damage. But the A1 has a chance to stun, nothing else, not that big deal. Then the A2 is a cleanse that puts a block debuff buff on your team and heals you a little bit based on how many debuffs you cleansed. And this heal can be fairly significant on Hydra, but it's not really that big deal. And there's tons of other cleansed champions in the game that are much better. And this skill honestly should do something else other than just this. And the A3 actually is kind of interesting skill that early on in the game kind of sounded interesting for damage and often people ask about this skill and if it does a lot of damage but it doesn't do it cannot critical strike so it actually sucks but sacrifices HP equal to 25% of this champion's max HP then attacks all enemies. Damage inflicted is equal to 50% of this champion's max HP, this attack is always a normal hit. So obviously he's gonna do, let's say that you have him at, uh, I don't know, 60k, I mean 120k health or whatever, and you're gonna hit the enemy for 60k, and then they're gonna reduce that damage by like 70% with their defense, and then maybe like additional, I don't know, you're basically gonna do like 5k damage is what I'm saying. This skill doesn't do any damage. There's so many different forms of damage mitigation that this kind of damage scaling is just completely irrelevant. Even if you could critical strike with this skill, it still would suck and they would need a massive uh, rebalance to it. But let's actually see what kind of rebalance we're getting and maybe laugh a little bit about the um, what Plarium thinks about the champion and what they're telling to us. I always have the issue that you cannot see the descriptions of items and so on, so let's not do that today. I am sure all of you remember, by the way, this is Plarium's statement, not mine, just as a disclaimer. This is not my opinion, this is their opinion. I am sure all of you remember Hakon Smashlord, once popular and beloved OG champion, Never used, never popular, nobody knows him, just to clarify. In a desperate need of a few tweaks in his kit, that, that is a very mild, mild understatement. The following changes should make him more relevant and competitive in the current state of the game. Nope. You can see that I have this champion and I'm slightly opinionated, but... um, Wait. We have reduced his A2 cooldown from 4 turns to 3 turns on both basic and ascended version of the skill. Thank god, that's gonna make all of the difference. And his A3 no longer requires, requires HP sacrifice. From now on, Hakon will simply attack all enemies with an ability. Wait, it can crit. With an ability to crit. After the attack, he will place a shield on all allies which better suits him as an HP tank compared to the old version of the skill. Okay, so A2 is just one turn cooldown reduction. Maybe it will help somebody on like some Hydra um, rotating the cooldown so that you can get it back in time for Hydra debuffs. Maybe it can be useful there or some other boss. Maybe, maybe Magma Dragon if you are early on in the game. And then the A3 attacks all enemies, places a shield debuff on allies. For two turns, the value of the shield is equal to 20% of the damage dealt. I mean, it sounds good intentioned. I guess it's technically improvement, but this skill isn't gonna do any damage. The shield is not gonna be relevant. I guess you can use it. I mean, the, the only reason to use Smash Lord is if you don't have any debuff uh, cleanse champions on your account, you desperately need one of those, then you can use him on Hydra or Magma Dragon or whatever boss you need to. But he sucks. He's not, not gonna be Battery relevant low. at all after this update. He certainly has... <laughs> what did Plarion say? I'm sure all of you remember Hakon's Mass Lord. 
once popular and beloved OG champion. He has never been used in anything, people have always complained about this. This update is not gonna fix that. I I appreciate the effort that Parium is doing doing some updates. I don't want to uh, give them like trash talk for that, but the update is not gonna do anything. Before he was a Vault Lord, he's still gonna be a Vault Lord. Now he's just gonna be even bigger meme that he's this garbage champion after after getting buffed. I don't want to be too negative, but this is more like um, he was so irrelevant that this doesn't matter. So I'm kind of just uh, laughing at the update because it doesn't doesn't make any difference. But on a positive note, we might get more updates this year or champion rebalances. Hopefully some of them, like if they are hit or miss, this was definitely like a massive miss. Like you, you, you like you didn't even hit the ball. Like you missed the target and you didn't even kick the actual ball. You just this was full miss as hard as you can do. But here you go. Here we have it. I don't know if anybody needed a clarification that Smash Lord sucks. But uh, in case you didn't know, now you know. And. Nobody's, I know, nobody's gonna disagree with this in the comments, but if I'm wrong, then roast me in the comments, burn me on the stake, but there's no way anybody is gonna disagree with my opinion with the Smash Lord. Surprise me. Anyway, that's it. More champion rebalances, hopefully soon. I'm waiting, waiting for those. This one is irrelevant. Have a nice day and see ya.